Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for being here. It's a. Uh, um, I feel like I can kind of breathe again after like the last year and a half. And somebody asked me if I was excited about this, and I couldn't necessarily answer it for the opening tonight because I'm also anxious about COVID and you know the pandemic and all of that. But actually being here amongst the art again um, for the first time in a year and a half that showed at Cal State LA, it's there is a, an amazing feeling about it, and um, kind of like coming home, it's really special being here. And, and thank you, Peter, and Studio Channel Islands, and everybody who helped, you know, make the show happen here in Camarillo. You know, I don't even remember dates now because of the pandemic. You know, it's like, what may have happened last week could have actually been a year and a half ago. <laughs> so... Um, when I first started the program, and, or the project, and even before that, a lot of my artwork's been about body image and been about my plus size body and living in it and it's kind of an autobiography of my life. Um, I've done photographs of myself um, among many different things dealing with ideas of beauty. Um, I painted children's furniture because I wanted to show that you know young girls from an early age are taught that being pretty is more important than anything and so it's always been something throughout, like a thread in, my art, in a lot of my artwork. And even my abstract art, a friend critiqued it recently, and she's like, well, I see your body in it. And I'm like, oh my god. So it's like always there. And um, so with this project, I started thinking about ideas of perception and how oftentimes we take our own self-worth from how we imagine others, others see us, others imagine us, others perceive us. And so I wanted to see what I see myself through other artists' eyes. And that was the basic premise of this, was um, talking about self-worth and validation and where that comes from. And so I started the project. Um, I think I was having a conversation with my friend Amanda Mir. She did the drawing um, on the white background in the back. She actually wanted to draw me for her project that she was doing, where she's drawn many people. And I went to her um, studio um, three times, two hours each. She drew me right when I was there. We were having this conversation about body image, about um, you know being plus size, or you know really any size, even if you're thin. You know, I know so many people who have you know different body image issues. And so the idea was kind of conceived in her studio, and so I asked if she would be like the first official um, artist in the project, and she was all for it. And I'm like, okay, who else could I invite? So I kind of went through my list of friends who, um, who do figurative work, and I mean, most of the artists here are friends. And then I also went through, like, I, I'm always, because I curate shows, I work with a lot of artists, I have on my computer a, fi a folder that says like artists to watch. And so I went through that folder and looked for artists that do figurative work. So I started inviting them and then it just kind of, I was gonna do 20 artists and then it went to 40 and then it went to 60. <laughs> and, um, and it was, I didn't even know what I was getting into, honestly. You know, which is, happens with me a lot. I'm like very impulsive. I like, I have this idea in my head and I run with it, you know, ask my assistant Shelly and she rolls her eyes. And Shelly's work is the one of me holding the cell phone there. <laughs> so, so I just kind of ran with it and planned it as I went along. And um, there were artists that I asked that, you know, never got back to me that, you know, weren't, um, weren't interested in being in it, you know, which was totally fine. But it was like the artists that I worked with. Um, I talk about this as a performance too, and some people have questioned that. What does that mean? How can this be a performance? And it's like the whole project, each, each time I met with an artist was a performance in itself. Um, a lot of times, like the artists would come to my space. I live at the brewery near downtown LA. They would take photos there. Um, or I would go to their spaces like Aviva. I, you know, we were in her backyard and I'm laying on the ground and she's like above me taking pictures. And, um, or like um, Danny Dodge, we went to the Mojave National Preserve and woke up at 4.30 in the morning to get those photos. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, every, you know, and it's all like this performance. This, and it's, these are, this is the documentation of that performance, of the, these performances that are taking place. 
And I mean, even the show traveling and being up and all of you are part of the performance too. So if you think about it that way, because you're all experiencing it, you know, in your own ways based on how you see the work, how you perceive yourselves within the work. And it's something I knew it was a universal kind of um, language that I was putting out there. It's a very personal show for me, but I knew that it was universal and that, you know, I when it was at Cal State LA, I had men coming up to me saying that they got it, that that is exactly how they feel. And that's that's important to me because it's, you know, even though it is me, it's like much more than that. And that's the other reason I invited 60 artists because I wanted to curate a show and support artists, you know, as much as I can. And so these artists are now traveling to all of these places too. You know, it's not just me. So it's my work, um, as I call myself a cultural producer rather than, well, and an artist. But so everything I do, curating, working with artists, um, you know, my own art, it's all part of producing culture in different ways. The performance part of it also deals with, um, like, having, like, hanging the, the show. Like, I didn't hang this one. And actually, I was very happy to drop off the art and walk away <laughs> and let Studio Channel Islands do it. Um, and Peter and Bob and everybody who helped. At um, Cal State LA, you know, I was there for three or four days, like laying out the show and hanging it with their team. And so it's, um, so, and again, that's all part of the performance is like placing things and seeing where it is. And so it's, um, it's, you know, exciting to see how powerful it is, you know, in a different way. You know, how the works speak to each other, you know, next to each other, which is, you know, which is really great. Um, it starts out, um, and the first, the first piece um, is Amanda Mears, the drawing, but there were two artists who I actually posed for before that, who I asked um, for their projects, and I asked their work to be in it. Um, Christine Blevins Morris Morrison, where I'm holding up You Are Beautiful, and that was actually like four years before, I think, or two years, something like that. And then um, J. Michael Walker, who is the photograph, I think it's on the far wall, where I'm laying um, as an obelisk. And he actually has a project called Bodies Mapping Time, where he's taken photographs of, um, of women of all ages, disabilities, um, race. It's, it's an amazing project. It took me a couple of years, actually, to pose for him. I don't remember why exactly, but... Um, I don't know if I was shy, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but then I did, and then this project happened, and so he um, graciously let me put his piece in the show. Um, but yeah, the last piece, um, I think, was Marjorie Salvatera, who are the two large pieces by The Office. Um, I think that was August of 2019. Where so, but most of the work was done within a year of, you know, I like meeting with the artists almost weekly for about a year. No, because I knew everybody was a professional artist, so um, no, I don't, I mean, well, and I take that back. I wasn't uncomfortably um, like that, but I wasn't uncomfortably physically. You know, most of the portraits I'm like in poses, or except for the ones standing, but that like I had to lay down on my side or, you know, for longer periods of time or lay on rocks in Mojave National Preserve or, um, you know, just like even sitting cross-legged is harder, you know, for me because of my size because, you know, um, I carry a lot of my weight from my waist down, so it's like, so it's a little harder. Um, so I was uncomfortable, you know, a lot of times in those positions, and I'd be taking Tylenol for a couple days after. So it was just, you know, part of the job, part of, you know, something that I realized would happen. Seeing the show again after the pandemic, I mean, seeing myself in the show, uh, actually, I thought I'd be thinner, you know, throughout the pandemic. I mean, my, the plan was to be thinner. Um, I'm working on it. it. You know, it's up and down. But 
So I was actually thinking about it, like what if I lost weight? What if I came to the next exhibition, you know, 50 pounds lighter or 100 pounds lighter, which is what I need to lose. What will that mean? And then I'm like, well, maybe I'll have the artist like do a second portrait of me thin and compare. And I'm like, no. <laughs> um, but throughout the whole, even before the pandemic, when I first did the project, um, I kind of, I feel kind of actually removed from, I mean, the, per, the actual artwork for me was the performance part was posing, was like the photos, was like working with the artist, and then this is the documentation of it. So I feel more like these are objects, like art objects. I don't actually um, feel like it's, like, I don't know. I don't feel a personal relationship with them, if that makes sense. Um, so, I mean, I definitely see myself, but I think it's been so long and I've looked at these so much <laughs> that um, I'm just used to them as art objects now. Um, the sentiment is still always in my mind, you know? And I do think about it like, oh, I look thinner in that one, or, you know, I don't like the roll on that one, or, you know, I do think about that and look at that sometimes, but, uh, and I'm like, what would my mom say about that one? <laughs> and she's going to see the show in Lancaster in a couple months, so. You know, it is different seeing the work laid out this way as far as, like, some of the groupings, like, you know, the artist work that went that went together before, you know, they're kind of separated. So it does make you look at the work differently. Um, and so I think they are, I don't know, I still see my body, but I think that's me. Yeah. But um, yeah, and maybe I've just been isolated for so long the last year and a half. <laughs> I mean, the, the easy answer is yes, but because of, and it's something I'm working on, um, is, you know, through, I don't remember, I actually don't remember now if I put it in the title, but I have an eating disorder. And so I've been working more seriously on it since September. And, um, you know, and I've realized like how I haven't been present in a lot of my life and I want that to change. And so there, there were moments, you know, where I was definitely present and I definitely felt the love. And, um, and then there were moments where I felt the love after, just like getting the work from the artist or seeing, like, you could tell how much love they put into it and feeling the love that way. Um, but it's something that I think I'm still working on and I'm still feeling. And I mean, I definitely, you know, all of the artists who participated, you know, I have some type, you know, whether it was before or after a connection with. And so um, that, you know, that means so much. Um, not necessarily, you know, I, I wanted it to be um, a way of me learning to love myself. Um, but I also realized, especially over the last few months, that it's not about my body, you know, it is about who I am. I don't know, yeah, it's definitely um, a work in progress <laughs> as far as like learning more about myself, who I am, what I want. Especially during the pandemic, it's like, I'm, you know, I've been thinking, what do I want to do with the rest of my life? Like so many people, I think, you know, trying to figure that out. and. Um, and, you know, yeah, it's like, does it matter? Does size matter? You know, and so, I mean, there's so many different things in relation to that. But um, something that I have realized, and it's funny, I'm in therapy, of course, and um, I was telling my therapist, and uh, this was like a few, like six or seven months ago, that, um, that, you know, I didn't want to be thin, that, you know, I wanted to learn to love my body as I am. And then I was reading back in a journal that I wrote where I was talking to one of my assistants and she asked like in a year, like if I could have anything I wanted, what would I want? And I said to lose 100 pounds. I'm like, so it is the weight, it is. But then, you know, I hear so many people who lose weight and you know, it's like they're still in the same position. 
You know, there's still, um, whether it's dealing with confidence or dealing with, um, you know, body image issues in many different ways, you know, it's not about the body. And so it's something that I am learning about, even though I think I would feel healthier, you know, thinner, and I'd feel stronger. Um, but then I watch videos of women my size that are like on the balance beam, <laughs> you know, things like that. So um, it's definitely something I'm always mulling over in my head. Like, I was talking to Debbie the other day, um, who did the big sculpture, and, you know, talking about um, it's going to go to Coastline Community College in the fall of next year. And I was hoping that it would be in the spring, because I'm, I, you know, actually, right after the show came down, I was exhausted. I was like, I'm done. I mean, I was, I was feeling really done with it. And then I'm like, and then everything closed down, and the shows were postponed. I'm like, okay, let me, you know, give it time. And, you know, with it coming back, I was actually questioning, do I want it to come back? You know, how, how do I feel about that? And I, you know, I kind of, I mean, I owe it to myself. I owe it to the artists in the show. Um, you know, and I, I feel like I owe it to the community and the public be, to continue the message because that's what my work is about. So that's the most important thing. And what happened after Cal State LA is um, I, we actually didn't know that the pandemic was going to happen. Um, the next show was, I think, going to be here. Maybe it was like in September, October. But I didn't want to pay for a storage unit and put the work in there for that long because so I couldn't really afford it. So I, um, so I had the artist pick up the work. And I'm like, I'll just have them deliver the work back to me you know, before we drop it off. And then the pandemic hit, and I'm like, thank God I did that. <laughs> and so um, the end of July, I had all of the artists, you know, I had a few of the pieces, because there's artists from out of town, but I had the artists deliver the work for me. And it's, um, you know, it's a lot of organizing, <laughs> working with, you know, 40 or 50 artists to make sure, you know, I have all, I, everything's, you know, there, and. So now that that's done, it's going to go right to MOA. They're going to pick up the work. So it's going to be a lot easier. And I'm already, I told like my assistant Emily, I said, we are not getting a U-Haul. We're going to hire transport next time. <laughs> so it's like I'm also learning a lot about all of that. But if it does, I've actually, because Emily, is, she works for me, and she um, sent out proposals to different locations to, for this to travel. And um, if we, we may continue to do it outside of Southern California, because I think it's done its time here. Um, but we'll have to see, and you know, what that means. And, and also, some of the work has sold. Um, there were, there's a few pieces that were in the first show that aren't in this show. Um, and actually, there's a couple pieces that are that the collectors let us borrow back. So there's also that. And then, like, Daggy um, did another piece, because her piece sold, so. Um, so there's all these logistics, you know, having to work through on top of, like, my other life with <laughs> everything else I do. No. Um, it, I feel like it's all my self-portrait. Uh -huh. I feel like, um, and it's hard to, it, it's, like, I'm the artist of this whole, I came up with the concept of it, I invited the artist. So I'm the artist, but I'm also the curator and the organizer and the producer. And so I feel like it's all of my self-portrait. When I first did the project, I don't know how many times I was banned on Instagram. And um, it's something, yeah, that I have learned. But, um, you know, I follow a lot of, um, like, fat activists. Um, artists on Instagram and Facebook and and I see what they're doing every day and it's an even um, like the comments that they get and you know but they continue to do it you know because I mean it's you know it's especially like the last year and a half um, seeing like the dual or the different extremes in our world in our you know in the US and it's like, you know, I, we have to keep fighting. You know, we have to, you know, just continue on. And, and I also, I'm totally aware I'm in Los Angeles, the celebrity culture here, the thin culture, the, you know, so I'm also fighting against that. 
And it is something, like I shaved my head in a, for a performance um, in 2012 um, at Barry's studio at the brewery. <laughs> and, um, and it was all about, you know, I didn't want to be defined by physical attributes. You know, I had blonde hair to here, and, um, and it was the most freeing thing I've ever done. And I said that I wouldn't grow it out until society changed, which <laughs> probably won't happen in my lifetime. But um, it was, yeah, I can't even imagine. Well, I don't know. Every once in a while, I'm like, do I want to grow my hair out? And I'm like, no, I don't want to brush my hair. <laughs> I'm like, so, um, but it's also just a symbol of, um, of labels and you know especially now you know there's so many different um, labels for for everything and I'm tired of labels it's like you know we it doesn't matter you know whether you're thin or fat or you know or a boy or a girl or whatever you know it doesn't or what color you are or you know I just hate that so I want to blur those lines and I or I how I want to be politically correct, of course, but I just, Why? you know, so it's like by shaving my head, I, you know, when I first did it, I used to work in an emergency room in uh, the Valley of Mission Hills, and they were like, grow your hair out. <laughs> they were a little more conservative. They were, one man, one male nurse was calling me G.I. Jane. Um, I got mistaken for a guy several times, and you know, and of course people thought I was lesbian or had cancer or, and it's like, why? You know, because I shaved my head, you know, it's like women can have short hair, men can have long hair. It's, you know, especially we've seen during the pandemic, how many men have grown their hair out? <laughs> you know, I bought clippers and I just continued to shave mine. But um, yeah, I, um, so I mean, it is, my work will continue to be socially relevant. No, I know no matter what I do for the rest of my life. Bravo. So, thank you.